Hi guys, Alex here. Welcome back to Girl Talk. I've got a little bit of mess and a little bit of drama today for you guys. For today's video, we are going to go ahead and do a Shantopolis world update, and we are going to cover everything that has been going on in the foodie-verse since we checked in on Sunday. Foodie Beauty really finds herself at a crossroads right now, and she has a big decision to make. Will she remain in Canada or go back to Kuwait to live with her husband? What will become of said relationship if she were to decide to stay in Canada? Will it come a time where she has no choice but to stay? She is a ticking time bomb, so to speak. Anything could happen, and we get to see it all unfold. One thing I don't understand is this journey of hers. Wasn't the point of going back to Canada for her to get her health on track? Although everything that she has done has been the contrary. Even after ending up in the hospital, she went right back to eating fast food on camera. We'll discuss as she continues to talk, but not take much action at all. Everything that she is doing makes zero sense. We will also discuss at the end Foodie's brand new video where she goes to a therapy appointment and drops the bombshell that nobody in her life wants her to go back to Kuwait. Shocker. She also does something on her channel that could get her in trouble. It really is an interesting time in the foodie-verse. So let's just get right into it. I mean, shall we? All right, you guys, welcome back to our Shantopolis World Update. The last time we checked in, which was on the live stream, join us Sunday night, 9 p.m. We have a lot of fun. If you want to interact with me, that's the best place or Twitter. Anyways, last we checked in, Foodie was down bad in Canada. She was laying up in a hospital bed with neurovirus. She made the proclamation that she was not going to be going back to the junk food, alluding to the fact that this was some sort of wake-up call for her. <laughs> but what happened next? next may shock you or not. You see, she was seen just a few days later having a massive, and I mean massive, Putin in the car. Along with the Putin, she offered an apology to those she has hurt over the years. Girl, I don't know. Your word don't mean much anymore. It's just interesting that she had her final message for a while, and then three days later, she's in the hospital. She's one of those girls that always has to make a huge spectacle about taking a break from social media. Y'all know the one. I'll be leaving Twitter for the foreseeable future. I must put the focus on my mental health. Like, we get it. Take a break. That's the foodie cycle for you. That's so foodie coded. That's what we love about foodie, I guess. The theatrics are everything. We actually never got around to discussing her first mukbang back. Yeah, she went straight from the hospital to mukbangs, a massive burrito bowl with Doritos. You would think if she was just super sick, she wouldn't be eating something like a Chipotle bowl. That's heavy. I love them, but not when I'm recovering from an illness. Well, at least we know the appetite is back. She has all these plans for medical appointments, therapy in Canada, but she's still leaving. Or is she? That's the thing with Foodie. You never really know what's going to happen until it happens. And her decisions change daily. Let's go ahead and discuss one of her recent live streams called Foodie Beauty is Live. Can't she even come up with a name these days? I'm going to go live with that title and see how many views I get. It just seems lazy, but I guess that's a nitpick. In regards to the ongoing conflict in the Middle East, which escalated over the weekend, Foodie says that she's waiting to see what happens, but is not afraid of going back to Kuwait. She says, quote, I'm not afraid of, like, war. She's just so incredibly ignorant, it's astounding. And we'll get to more comments that are even worse. She's getting things done in Canada. A few more appointments and she's ready to go back to Kuwait. What's a couple of appointments gonna do? I think that anything could happen at this point. She could go back or something could end up keeping her in Canada. It's really not set in stone as she wants us to believe because she's a ticking time bomb. Anything could happen between now and when she's set to go back. So she's not going to get an apartment because it's not going to be worth it. She's not going to be there that much longer. Although she did say she'll be staying till Mother's Day, about. So it won't be worth saving your life. Here's the deal. An apartment and bills in Canada will be tough to swing for her, but she can do it. The problem is it will severely cut into her food budget. 
end of. Is that what this is all about? She knows that if she stays in Canada, she won't be able to afford to eat that much. But isn't the whole point for her to be cutting back on what she's eating? It's hard to say exactly where her head's at. She's already planning new trips, mentioning Malaysia, maybe a return to Thailand. I guess she wouldn't be able to do that if she stayed in Canada. She did surprise me when she went to Thailand, but that became exhausting to watch. She starts to go off on viewers, accusing her of lying and begging for money for an apartment that she had no intention of getting and her visa status, which has been a point of contention for a while now. To be clear, according to Foodie, she claims that in regards to begging, she made exactly $37 and that those people can have their money back. I don't care. If you give this woman money, that's your problem, not mine. Next. But she gets snarky about it. Clearly, she doesn't even appreciate the little bit of help she did receive. In this life, she says that she's not going to go back for a while, but that seems to change on the daily. She talks about her sciatica and says that it's magically gone. Right, just like her diabetes. The sciatica has left the chat, but we know what happened with the diabetes. It came back with a vengeance. So who's to say the sciatica isn't going to come back and be five times worse? She just doesn't care. I noticed you can still see the pipe burn from her time with Natter, which makes me think this return to Canada arc has been so nostalgic. She promised her family that she would see a doctor while she's there. But if it was up to her, she'd be back already. I thought nobody could control you, hun. you You're a loose cannon. You do what you want. What happened to all that? Not so big and bad. She has to go to the bathroom, so she puts the camera on the seat so that nobody can track her location and pop up like a jack-in-the-box. It happens to be an emergency every single time she has to go, and it's been that way for years now. That feels like a medical issue. I feel bad for whoever has to clean up that mess. Where's Salah when you need him? His mouth is like a vacuum. This bathroom break ends up taking up a huge chunk of the live. Talk about nontent. You're literally just staring at the ceiling for a third of the vlog. Later on in the day, Miriam, remember her, returns with a mukbang in the great outdoors. I love seeing her maneuver outside. It's certainly not her element. She's an indoor human. In the natural light, even with the filters, you get to see just how unwell she appears these days. She sits down to eat her pizza, and it comes with a bun that she throws out to the birds. I only say this because people found a post from her aunt calling out people who feed birds bread. Interesting timing indeed. A truck pulls up. Can you imagine what they're thinking about? about this big woman with a whole pizza sitting down in the park with seagulls swarming. I'm not your toilet, she exclaims. Salah has entered the chat. Look, I know my skin is not great. I have a lot of issues, but Foodie has claimed to have alabaster skin like a China doll. So I just have to ask what is going on? on here. After stuffing in about a thousand calories, it's time for her to head back to the car for a chit chat in her dirty clothes. She begins to rant and rave. Whenever she starts to sit down and actually read the side chat with no food to distract her, she begins to get snappy. It's inappropriate for us to act like it's crazy that she would want to go back to Kuwait. It's not the worst place to live in the world, you know? Girl, I don't think that's the issue. I think it's your health, first and foremost. You're not going to be able to get the medical care you need in Kuwait, and you know it. She has so many things to do, even when she returns to Kuwait. Quote, I don't mind being in an apartment, really, as long as I get to go out every once in a while. Is that her idea of a good life? Damn. She has a duty to take care of her home, and that's what keeps her busy. Since she's gotten to Canada, she goes out every day. Don't you like having that freedom and not having to rely on a man? She's not afraid of war, as we said earlier, but has absolutely no plan if something were to happen. Quote, if I had to fight for my family, I would. Does she realize that she can't even walk a quarter mile? What would she do if they had to flee? What would she do if she had to go into some sort of shelter with like minutes on the clock? There's no way she's making it. Sorry to get so like dark, but she's completely ridiculous and delusional about this. Speaking of being completely delusional, she does say that she can get well in Kuwait. B.S. I don't even think the doctors take her seriously over there, and this is why. They probably see her as someone who is stopping in and getting some care before they return to their home country for actual treatment. It's all her convincing herself that she hates Canada and loves Kuwait. Convince yourself. 
She then goes to get ice cream and claims that this is a cheat day. I know what you're thinking. It's not a cheat day if that's just how you eat every day, is it? The next couple of videos we will be covering are actually vlogs about her life in Canada. So you know that they will be filled to the brim with fake nicey nice voiceovers. The problem with her crap B-roll is that it totally overstays its welcome fast. Girl, step away from the cheese curds. It's almost weird seeing her out because in Kuwait, even the groceries are either delivered or Salah goes out and gets them. This video, which was titled Shopping Day, is just that. A lot of her shopping. At least she's not ripping things off the mannequin, if you know, you know. The highlight of the trip for her was Lush. She's like an anti-advertisement for Lush, I must say, but I swear by their curly hair gel. It's not gel, but I don't know what to call it. Chantal gets a lot of stuff, including a $45 facial moisturizer that is really small, about the size of one of their masks. She must have spent hundreds of dollars, and I thought she was broke. Maybe she's trying to go through all of her money so that she can't get back to Kuwait because Salah's the one trying to convince her to go back. And if she just can't afford to go back, she just can't afford to go back. It's hard to say for real what she thinks and what Salah is manipulating her to think. As much as she sees herself as the master manipulator, I'm going to manipulate you, as she said in Cuba. I think she's the one that's very easily manipulated, especially by men. Look at the things that Natter got her doing. That's a good point. Natter had her kissing his toes. Literally, there's a picture of it. What is with her and men? I watched the whole vlog and there was not much of note except this plate of food she had at a bougie lunch spot that came out to about 30 US dollars. At the end of the vlog, she goes out to the car to sit down as everyone else continued shopping. The next video was interesting. Probably one of her worst vlogs in a while. It all felt like more of a distraction technique. This one being called Out of Shape at the Upper Canada Bird Sanctuary Canada Vlog. This is why she's not going live, because she knows people will have questions, like the top comment on this video here. How are you going to live through another summer in Kuwait? She's just not thinking about those things, girl. Don't bring it up. <laughs> this video does serve a purpose, though, to show us that she can walk from bench to bench. Was this supposed to be pretty? Because it looks very dreary this time of year. The shaky cam as she barrels towards the next bench is certainly a cinematic choice. She does have an appointment today, though, I suppose medical, saying that many people just don't understand her journey. Oh, we don't understand it, do we? It's the foodie beauty cycle. That's the journey. There's not much going on. <laughs> Things get solemn as she begins to discuss how she can't walk very far. Peep yesterday's makeup. And she lost what little bit of stamina she had built up going out with Salah about a month or two ago. She's bracing herself for the discomfort she will be going through on this new journey. I just have to ask, when is it beginning? She says in this video that she's going to be eating less and healthier coming up. You said that in the hospital already and look what happened. On another note, Salah made his return, triumphant return, to live streaming, oddly enough. On the couple's channel, he did a bit of a walk and talk and people were laughing on Twitter because he wrote their name, Salah and Chantal, in the sand, but the water kept washing it away. <laughs> the universe knows, girl. Okay, so I had the video edited and ready to go, but she actually posted one more vlog, so I want to stay up to date. I know you guys do as well, so let's get through this. This one was called Lunch and Therapy Canada Vlog. Is it just me or is Canada somehow worse than Kuwait? I never thought I would say it, but I'm fine with her going back to Kuwait now. No, I just think it's because she's living with other people and we can't really see the mess like she had at the villa. There's no Pete's. There's no tall Pete's. She's not allowed to film inside at all. The beginning of this one isn't much. More horrible B-roll. She's going out for the day with her aunt. She must be living with her mom right now because that was speculated on. People figured, but the fact that she's picking up her aunt confirms. And that's why she can't film because her mom is over YouTube. After she almost had her car towed, she's been walking around with this like sm on her lip for the last couple of vlogs. I don't know, guys. I just noticed it. 
I'm not sure why this was even brought up, but she says that she has no intention of driving in Kuwait, even though she could get an international license. Next, they eat at a vegetarian restaurant, blah, blah, blah. No one cares. Tell us about the therapy. So she comes on after the appointment. She's at the park filming this. And she admits that when she made the appointment, she told them that she planned on staying in Canada. This was supposed to be a long-term thing. And that ends up becoming the main focus of their session. I still think that she's thinking about it. Should I stay or should I go? The doc says that she hasn't grieved part of who she was, maybe her old life. Here's when she drops the bombshell. She says, I don't know anybody that understands me wanting to go back to Kuwait. So not her family, nobody online, but her therapist did. Right. The therapist doesn't know what's going on. You only met her for 45 minutes. Chantal probably just said, my husband's there, my family's there, and of course the therapist would go along. The therapist gave her some options for remote therapy in regards to her BED and other counseling, and told her to find other expat reverts, maybe there's some kind of support group. But let's not kid ourselves, there's no way that she would ever do that. She's wasting everyone's time. And they told her to just get out more. (laughs) Yeah, no crap. That's pretty much it for her therapy update. She just wanted to tell us, see guys, someone understands why I want to go back so bad. The rest of the video was perplexing. And it shows just how lazy she has become. It's literally old content. But not old unseen content. It's content ripped from her first video going to Kuwait. Before Kuwait. Dot, dot, dot. After Kuwait. (gasps) Oh! Oh my goodness, what happened? She just took a couple of clips and pasted them at the end so that she could get that sweet, sweet ad revenue. I don't even think you're allowed to do that, but that's foodie for you. The easiest way to make a quick buck. All right, you guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Foodie insists that she will be going back to Kuwait, but what does that entail? Despite her putting it out there that she can get herself together in Kuwait, we've seen nothing but failure after failure and her lose even more of her mobility staying in Kuwait, along with her new diagnosis of sciatica, which she claims has disappeared. Will it return as soon as Salah asks her to do some exercise? And why can't she just bring him to Canada? Is it the bankruptcy? She can't convince her mother to sponsor him? I feel like that would solve all of her issues. But she's intent with convincing us that Salah definitely doesn't want to go to Canada, despite having a Canadian flag in his gaming profile and telling his friends that he wanted to go to Canada. Right, foodie. We're not buying it. We're all caught up until she goes live while you're editing this. The fate of Foodie Beauty. Which path will she take and where will it lead? Let me know in the comments down below and I will, of course, catch you guys in the next one. All right. Bye, everyone. 